Thank you for tuning in to the Wayworld Outreach Sermon. We believe that God's Word will make a major impact in your life. If you would like to help make an impact in someone else's life, visit thewayworldoutreach.org slash donate. Let's tune in to today's sermon. Turn to Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. The title again, the why and how of evangelism. The why and the how of evangelism. You want to get a notepad, you want to grab a tablet. If you don't have one of those things, borrow something from your neighbor. You want to write some stuff down. Today is, is, a, is, is teaching. Yeah, I preach. I can't, I can't help it. I just want to preach and run. Uh, I was just sweating 9 o'clock service. I got to calm down because we got another service after this. Um, I don't want to lose my voice. But there's going to be some teaching. Write some stuff down. These are scriptures we're going to need to know when we're witnessing. Um, and Mark 16 kind of kicks us off. Mark 16, 15 and 16. When he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Everyone who believes and is baptized will get saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Who should we witness to? Who should we evangelize to? Everybody. Every, someone say everybody. Does that mean at the barber shop? I got my hair cut yesterday. We had church in the barber shop. Church, I began to talk about the way, and there was a guy there saying he wanted to start a business. And I said, man, start a business? That's great. Our church has an entrepreneurial ministry, our young adults. We can help you start a business. And before I know it, 10, 15 minutes into getting a haircut, haircuts are stopping, and we're having church right there in the barber shop. Isn't God awesome? That's what God wants to do. He wants to have church everywhere you go. Yesterday we had an outreach. And we had an outreach, Pastors United. We went out to a church. Yeah, give it up for Pastors United and the outreach teams. We went out there. We're having church in the middle of a park. I show up, man, and people that way and people this way. And I said, Lord, this is going to be awesome. Then we're going to have church right in the middle of a park. People are going to get slain in the spirit right here in the grass. People are going to get touched and healed right here in the park. Because Jesus wants everybody to be saved. And for the next few minutes, I want to share with you, why should we share this good news? Why should we preach the gospel? Here's number one. Jot this down. Why should we share the good news? Number one, it's our number one purpose as a believer. It's our number one responsibility. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. So why should we share the gospel? It's our number one responsibility. Our number one responsibility is not to be a pastor. We get people to come to the church sometimes, and I, I, I could tell people's motives. Have you ever hung out with somebody? You could tell their motives. You say, okay, I know where they're going with this. And uh, we got people all the time coming to the church and looking for a job and looking for a position and, and say, hey, look at my resume. Look at what I've done. And I've pastored here, and I've done this, and I've done that. All that stuff is great. But we're not a pastor first. I'm not Pastor Robert first. We're not a teacher first. We're not a guitar player first, which Christian, give it up for our guitar players, man. They rock. I love the worship team. You guys just get better and better. And then that song you wrote, Jordan, that's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother topic. We're not, a, we're not a drum player first, even though our drum player is like one of the best in the world. Playing the keyboard, that's not first. Multimedia team, we're not a computer guy. We're not an editing guy first or a woman first. We're not, any, we're not a prophet first. We're not an altar worker first. Let's go to your job. You're not a business person first. You're not a teacher at your elementary first. You're not a professor first. You're not a mechanic first. You're not a construction worker first. You are a soul winner first. Where are my soul winners in the house? Where are my soul winners in the house? Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm a soul winner for Jesus. Tell the person behind you, I'm a soul winner first. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus is getting ready to start his ministry. He's getting ready to get all his disciples. And look what he tells, look how he recruits. Because he wanted to make sure that first thing was first. He wanted to make sure his disciples didn't get confused what Christianity is all about. He didn't want to get his disciples confused what ministry was all about. Look what he tells them. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing, into a, throwing a net into the water. For they fished for a living. Any fishermen in the house? 
All right, you're like fishermen. So you, you, can, you can see that these guys, they were out there fishing, but this is what they did for a living. Jesus goes out to them, verse 19. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Huh? What kind of ministry is that? Fish for people? He tells me, yeah, come follow me. I see you guys are fishermen, but I'm going to teach you how to be a fisherman of people. Imagine if we went door to door like that, adopt the block, and we just knocked on doors and said, hey, come follow us. We want to make you fishermen of people. Pastor Todd, that doesn't make no sense. I thought it was a title first or something that we get. I thought it was something. No, no, no. God said, no, I'm going to set this thing up. And fishermen of people, if you're new to the church, what is that? All that means is that we, that we reach people and we give them to Jesus. We, we represent Jesus and, and, and we, we, we evangelize and, and we're fishers of people. See, when, in, a, in a few minutes, we're going to have an altar call. I'm going to get my fishing line. I don't have one. But it's a spiritual fishing line, and I'm going to go fishing in a few minutes. I'm going to throw the line out in about 24 minutes, 23 minutes, and 22 minutes. And that clock is so fast. Where does the time go in church? In a minute, I'm going to throw the fishing line out, and we're going to fish for people. The reason why we soul win it's our purpose. But can I be honest with you guys? Yesterday, can I, can I tell my business? Can I just, can I repent in front of you guys? I love repenting here because it just kind of real frees me. I got up yesterday. Pastors United, we got an outreach, right? 40 churches or so, we get together, and we have an outreach every three months. I get up, and I tell myself, I'm not going to go today. Can I repent? Pastors United, Pastor Beckley, anybody watching, I apologize. I woke up. I told my mind, I'm not going to go today. Pastor Christian and our team, they already got our section. It's, it's handled. And can you give it up for our outreach team? They're amazing. <laughs> Christian, those guys, awesome job. And I said, oh, they got it covered. And there's 40 churches there. What am I going to do? It's cool. They got it covered, man. This is it. Shame on me. Holy Spirit told me, man, you forgot what this is all about. It's not about a building. This is not the church that the Bible describes in the sense of just a building. It's not just four walls. Holy Spirit reminded me, Rob, you're the church. Don't forget how this church started. This church started on the streets. We didn't start with the building. We started knocking on doors. We started loving people. We would go to the park. It started buying bakers for everybody in the park. Just loving people. And the Holy Spirit began to tell me, did you forget how it started? Are you forgetting what ministry is all about? You ever had a moment with God like that where he just kind of, Holy Spirit reminds you of something? Man, my eyes teared up. And we got an office at my house, and I, and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I apologize. I said, I'm going. When I pulled up to Ann Sherwell's Park yesterday, the place was packed with people. And, I, and, and, and it's, it, it's like, it was like going, it's like my wife, it's like first love at first sight, man. I get there, and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Look at all these fish. We're going fishing right now. And they came to us at a park. Look at these people. These are God's children. This is the ministry. 1 Corinthians verse 5, verse 18, it says, Now all things are God who has reconciled reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 5.18, and he has given us this ministry of reconciliation. God calls it our ministry, our ministry of reconciling people back to God. And just yesterday, the enemy was trying to attack me. He was trying to attack my mind. 
Because if we don't watch it, we can become Christians that are cold. There's a lot of churches right now that are cold. Nobody getting saved at their altars. Nobody getting baptized of the Holy Ghost. No worship in the church. Because of the church, if we're not careful, that's me and you, we could get cold. Have you ever been cold before? I'm like you. We got a lot of problems sometimes. And I think if we're not careful, we're thinking about that problem and this problem and that problem and this money problem and this marriage problem and this kid problem and this car problem and this house problem and we forget about the soul problem that we have in america the soul problem that we have in our nation this nation needs jesus like never before april stand up sweetie april stand up she was there with us yesterday april i applaud you no continue standing for a second man I went over there, somebody asked me, is anybody face painting? I said, I don't know, I don't think we're face painting. And he goes, yeah, there's somebody that's face painted around here. And I said, there is no face painting. We didn't talk about face painting in our, in our meetings. And finally I said, well, let me walk around, let me check. And I found April with just, she must have had about 100 kids. 100 kids waiting in line just to get their face painted. April, you spent hours and hours. They were asking for help. Anybody else face painted? Because they had so many kids. They know kids were waiting half an hour, an hour just to get their face painted. So when you, were, when, you were, when you were painting those faces, you were giving them Jesus. You were giving them the Holy Ghost. Why do we share the good news? Why? It's our ministry. It's not doing this and doing that first. Even though all this is highly important, your job is highly important, but that's not your number one ministry. Your number one ministry is reaching souls. How many want to reach souls everywhere they go? So I want, I want you guys to practice this. Somebody ask you, hey, what do you do for a living? What do some of you guys do for a living really quick? Who's, anybody, any construction workers? Any construction workers? I want you guys to do this this week. If somebody asks you, hey, what do you do for a living? You're going to say this, I'm a fisherman. Then you're going to say this, because you might, people, they're going to think you're crazy, right? Okay, not going to stop the, you. We'll bring back the sanity in the next statement. That way they don't think you're crazy. They're going to ask you, what do you do for a living? I want you to practice this. I, I've done this, and I still do this to this day. It keeps me with the right perspective. What do you do for a living? I'm a, con I, 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 see, I was going to say construction worker. No, I'm a fisherman of people. And how I make my money, I do construction on the side. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. We're a soul winner first. Any mechanics in the house? Anybody fix on cars? No mechanics? Restaurant? Okay, mechanic. This is what you're going to do. What do you do for a living? I'm a fisherman. And I'll work on cars on the side to make some money for my family. And they're going to say, what? Fisherman of people? And there it goes. There's an open door to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is looking for opportunities every day. He's looking for Christians every day to move through. I pray that I will be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus to my last breath. Jesus was on the cross and he was dying and he was still handling business. He's dying on the cross and he looks, who can I get saved now? I know I'm doing something for the whole world, but I want some one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And he's hanging on the cross, and there's two thieves there. One guy's talking nonsense. You got to watch out for those people when you're witnessing, they're talking nonsense. Watch out when you're witnessing, they start saying, well, if there's a God, why is there this? If there's a God, why does the Bible contradict itself? The other day I had somebody tell me that, if there's a God... How, how the, the Bible contradicts itself. Most people who say that, they just heard someone else say it. They don't even know what they're talking about. So I told them the Bible contradicts itself. Man, never heard of that one. And I got my phone out because then you know, got the Bible on the phone. I said, show me the contradiction. Man, I love to see that. Well, I just heard it. I don't know where it's at. 
they're trying to sidetrack you. Get back on the cross. Get back on the good news that we can be made right with God just by putting our faith in Jesus. Don't let people distract you. Get them back on the cross. So why do we share the good news? What's number one? Let me see if you guys got it. What's number one? Is a pastor first. Being an evangelist first. What's our number one purpose? Oh, we're getting it. This is it, number two. And I want you, Diamond, if you can't get the chalkboard or the whiteboard, whatever we call that thing, we're going to give a demonstration. Why do we share the good news? Number two. This is deep stuff. You're going to love this. You're going to change your life forever. You get, this is reason number two why we witness. You get a full understanding of who God is. I always told people that if you don't witness, your spirit man or your fire will go out. Philippians chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, in the NIV 84 version, it says this, I pray that you may actively share your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Keep that scripture up there. Take a look at it. This is the second reason why we witness. This is, this, is, this is worth everything right here. This is why we witness. One of the main reasons right here. You have people getting saved. That's, yeah, that's number one. We want to see people go to heaven. But this is for you and I now. Now it gets really personal. This is why we witness. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing that we have in Christ. Let me write it out for you so we really get it. How many want to know the fullness of Jesus? How many want to know the fullness of the good things of God? This is how it works. I know you can't see the board weight in the back, so you're going to have to zoom in really good. Just watch my ball spot back here. Get the side view. My wife told I don't got a problem here, my wife said. My wife said, you got a problem here. <laughs> Sorry, Veronica. She's looking at me one day. She's all, you don't have a forehead. She goes, you got a five head working. <laughs> but I love you so much. So watch the angle this side because Veronica said I have a five head. I don't have a four head. Back here, I'm okay. This is how it works. Look at the scripture again really quick. There's a lot of teaching right now. Okay, this is more, this is more like, a, like a classroom setting right now, okay? You got to get. If this message doesn't become practical, we just wasted a half an hour. You guys got that? So this is not just a teach. Okay, cool. Wait, out of here. Thank you. Awesome service. I got goosebumps. Let's go home. Let's go to Denny's. Or let's go watch the Raider game or the, whoever's playing today. All right, yeah. We're the Cowboy fans. I feel sorry for you guys. You guys are okay. You guys will be okay this year. Okay, stay with me. Stay focused. God, you can't mention sports for nothing in this church. I, will, I pray that you get active. There's a lot of Christians that are inactive. We go to church, but we're not being the church outside the walls. Okay, that's a whole other thing. Stay, stay here, stay here, stay here. This is how it works. Share. Man, my riding is bad. You're, oh, okay, sorry. Share. Can you guys see that? What do we do? We actively share. You guys got that? What do we do first? This is what happens. We actively share the gospel. Then it, when you actively share the gospel, then you see lives get transformed. You see people getting saved on aisle nine at Stater Brothers. You're having church right there at the barber shop. You're having church in the middle of a park. And people are getting saved and getting baptized of the Holy Ghost at the park. So we share the faith. The scripture says we share the faith. People get transformed. The power of God shows up. How many of you have ever preached the gospel and the power of God showed up? 
It's going to happen. Now, this is a progression according to that scripture. Then we get to see the fullness of God. We get to experience all the goodness. Oh, man, look at that. Right, really bad now. You guys see it? What happens first? We actively share. What happens first? Then what happens when we actively share? What happens after that? We, got, we get the revelation of all the goodness of who God is according to Philippians 1, 5, and 6. When I showed up at the park, guess what? I seen Jesus' fullness yesterday. I seen him saving people in the middle of a park. Then we prayed for people to get healed. A couple people that I prayed for, they got healed right there at the park. Then Sears, they came along with us yesterday, and they donated hundreds and hundreds of pairs of brand new shoes from Sears. People waiting in line for three hours, waiting for some kicks. I seen, and I got some more revelation of who God is. When you and I witness, we get a new revelation of who God is. You gotta write that down. When you and I witness, you start to get a full understanding of all the goodness of God. You understand how awesome he is. You understand how great he is, how, how powerful he is. Now let's go back to the board. Let's get negative for two minutes. And it's not this church, but let's say you do not witness. You don't tell nobody about Jesus. Okay, that's fine. It, well, it's not fine, yeah, but yeah, I understand. Okay. But they understand what I'm saying. You got it, Matthew. Okay. If you don't share the gospel with nobody, that means you're not going to see no people get transformed around you. You guys see the progression? What happens next if you don't share the gospel? You get no revelation who God is. You never get to the real understanding of the goodness of God. So I seen this last night. A light bulb went out. I said, I always tell people, you got you to gotta witness and you got to share the gospel because, man, you, your fire will burn out. Now I got it. In the NLT, you'll see the scripture says that all the good things that God has will start coming in play once we share the gospel. So here's the question. If you're a Christian and you do this cycle, I'm not going to share. Therefore, I'm not going to see nobody get transformed. Therefore, I'm never going to understand really who God is. Speak to me. What do you think happens to that Christian that decides I'm not going to witness. I'll just let Adopt the Block do it. I'll let Pastor Robert do it. I'll let the alt. I don't want to share. I don't want to sound like a, a crazy person at my job. I don't want to be the odd man out. And I don't want to start havoc because if I tell people that they need Jesus, they might think of me I'm weird. Let's say a Christian does that. They don't share. No one. What happens to that Christian? What do you think happens to them? The revelation of who God is starts to decrease. See, coming to church service, this is how we grow. Yeah, we're here. We're learning. But it's not only this. Like, if this is the only time you read your Bible, you're going to die. As a, not die physically. You're going to be like, whoa, wait, slow down. You'll die spiritually. How many eat once a day? Or no, 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 no. How many eat once a week? Does anybody eat once a week? No, we, I, I, I'd be visiting you at the hospital. You'd be dead. Unless you're fasting, you're, you're, God told you to fast. Or if you're like me, man, I eat like four or five times a day if I'm bad. Oh, I'm the only one bad in eating, yeah. How many indulge himself in a good chocolate cake once in a while? Like at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you ever get that sweet tooth at one o'clock in the morning? I try to sneak to the refrigerator every so often. 
And Veronica hears me, where are you going, Rob? <laughs> you ever had that sweet tooth? It's the same thing with God, His Word. We can't read this thing once a week. We can't wait till Christmas to share the gospel. We can't wait until Adopt the Block has an outreach just to share there. We can't wait every three months for Pastors United. Because if you do that, no lives being transformed and you'll never, ever, ever understand all the goodness of Jesus. So every time you witness, lives are transformed. Every time you witness, your understanding of God is growing. You're falling more in love with Jesus. By the time I left that outreach yesterday, because in the beginning of the day, I was getting kind of cold. How many of you have been cold before as a Christian? You're busy and you're doing stuff. I was almost getting there. Hey, God, just don't lose this. If you lose this, you'll lose this. And if you lose this, you're, really, you're going to have a hard time. You're not going to understand me fully. You're going to start doubting me like you did back in the days. Because when you share the gospel, I build you with faith because you're seeing lives getting transformed. How many soldiers do I have in the, in the building? Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't mistake me. I'm a soul winner. And number three, here's the last thing. Because they won't give me more time in this place. <laughs> number three, why do we witness? What was number one? Let's review. Why do we witness? What's number one? Is it our purpose? Or are we just professional Christians? Go to church. Tablet. And then we go... And we just live how we want to live the rest of the day. No. Number two. What's number two? Why do we witness? Oh, we're getting it. I love it. I'm getting it too. I'm preaching. I'm, here's number three. The reason why we witness is because people are headed to hell. And we need to warn them. One of the reasons why we share the gospel, people are headed to hell, and we need to warn them. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 7 through 9. Now, son of man, I'm making you a watchman for the people of Israel. I am making you. I'm not asking of you. I'm not requesting that you become a watchman. I don't, it's just a good idea, so I think you should be a watchman. No, I, son of man, I know the women are saying, all right, the women are out of this one. No, the women are in this one too. Everybody, the son of man, mankind, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. I'm making you a watchman of San Bernardino. I'm making you the watchman of your neighborhood. I'm making you the watchman of your job site. Some of us are complaining about our job, complaining about that crazy boss, complaining about that employee, and we've lost the reason why God gave us the job in the first place. The job just wasn't to get a paycheck. The job is a platform. Your job is a platform to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why did God put me in this family? I'll tell you why. That's your platform to share about Jesus. Everywhere we go, it's a platform. You guys getting it? Oh, man, I love it. People are headed to hell. We got to warn them. Therefore, listen to what I say. This is Ezekiel 33. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. Warn them of what's about to happen. Warn them of what's going on in this world. The world's going crazy right now. Anybody agree with me? Pastor Joel, one of our pastors, and it's crazy. Some guy went on his property the other day and said, hey, we want to buy this property. He's an engineer, you know, and the guy said, well, his boss said, the owner says, place is not for sale. They ain't no for sale sign. He goes, I know, but we love this property. We love the location. We're trying to be the biggest marijuana dispensary in the United States of America. And we got vision for this property. 
Yeah, that's right. God has a vision for us, but when we're not taking care of business, the enemy has a vision for you as well. The devil has a vision for your family and for your marriage and for your job and for, he has a vision as well. The boss said, man, this place ain't for sale. What's wrong with you? He goes, we love it. We love the location. Maybe you're hard of hearing. The place ain't for sale. The guy said, look, we're going to be the biggest cannabis place in the United States. We already wrote it down. It's done. We're going to be the biggest one. It ain't for sale. The guy said, well, we got investors. We'll write a check right now for $25 million. The owner said, it's for sale. <laughs> so everybody got fired except our, our, pastor, our pastor and his buddy. They fired the whole thing. They're moving overseas. They only, they only kept our guy. How many know we got favor with Jesus? <laughs> the enemy is not playing in these last days. Christians, we got to get alert. There are people that are headed to hell, and we need to warn them. Verse 8, if I announce that some wicked people are sure to die, and to fail to tell them to change their ways, and they, and they die in their sins, I'm going to hold you responsible for their deaths. What? We're going to be held responsible? Every message that we get, we're held responsible. Today we're talking about soul winning, evangelizing. This is a message of God. Okay, this is it. We're talking about the good news. I want you to go out. There's people there that are, we got to warn them. We say, oh, I don't want to do it. No. And, and I understand sometimes there's fear. I've had it. I still get it once in a while. When I'm dealing with one-on-one -on -one evangelism, I get scared sometimes. What am I going to say? How about they ask me a question? I, just, I don't know. I can't find the scripture. I don't know this person. What do they think? I'm weird. And I, I still get that once in a while. But I got to fight past that. I got to fight past my awkwardness. I got to fight past the fear and say, God, I'm a little scared, but I know you want the son you want this daughter to go to heaven and I'm the voice to tell him went to Mexico prison just a few weeks ago someone asked you days were you scared pastor I said no way back in my head I was like yeah a little bit then I was honest I said well, it was a little weird it was a little it was a little uh, walking into another country just going through the border is scary I hear all these crazy stories about the border you know, we went to the border that day on the Tecate side. There was two cars when we went in, and we were the only car going out. God just cleared everything in so we could go straight to the prison. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. There's times that that fear will try to kick in. Or the doubt. Well, if I say something, they're not going to change or they're not going to get transformed. What do I do? We got to put that to the side and say, God, I'm here to warn people. I'm here to let people know about Jesus. We're, we're, we're way out of time. I wish we had another hour. We got to do, how many would come if we did a class like on a Monday night and we did like four hours on evangelism? Okay. Some people are like four hours, Pastor. I'll do three hours, but four hours is a little too much. But yeah, we, have, we need time on that. How many are getting the word of God? Give God a big shout of praise. Did everybody get one of these? If you didn't get one of these, raise your hand. I'm going to make a bold move. Ushers, you guys ready? Fast, 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 fast. If you didn't get one of these, raise your hand. Yeah, just throw it. Just go if you have to. No, don't throw it. I'm just joking. Over here. This is our card for our church. To be a soul winner, man, you got to get loaded up. Get loaded up on the word and loaded up on flyers. Everywhere I go, man, I got cards and flyers. I'm popping them. I got these. I got like. I got everything. I always have these in my pocket when I'm on the streets and I'm going. I'm at the gym. You know what I do at the gym? I put these all over the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry. I put them all over the mirror. Yeah, yeah, I'm radical like that, crazy like that. I go to the gas station. You know, you put the credit card. I put the card in there. I'm probably the one who breaks the machines half the time. I just put it. 
I said, the next time someone uses a credit card, they're going to see Jesus. Every time they put gas, one person, they're going to get hit with Jesus while they're putting gas. Not only are we giving you, be my guest, did everybody get one of these, how to lead somebody to Christ card? You got one? If you didn't get one of these, talk to an altar worker. As we come to a close in this service, nobody leaving, let me dismiss in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to do an offering. We're going to do an altar call. Nobody leave. Let me dismiss in a few minutes. If you didn't get one of these cars, get one of these. It's a prayer right there that you can lead somebody to Christ. It's got questions on the other side, starting a conversation with coworkers, friends, family. It shows you. You can just read it. If you've never did any type of evangelism, you say, hey, can you give me two minutes? Let me read this to you. Sometimes you don't even got time to read it. Just give it to them. Say, hey, when you get time, can you read this? Happened with Mondo's cousin. Mondo, our head usher here. Raise your hand, Mondo, for all the new people can see you. What's up, Mondo? He's awesome. His aunt, years back, a Christian gave him a card like this. Not like this, the way it wasn't around, but it was similar. His aunt, years back, he went to the funeral yesterday. She went on to be with Jesus. And years back, Mondo's aunt, someone just gave him a card. Hey, when you got time, read this thing gave it to her. She was hooked on drugs really, really bad. She goes to a house to go pick up some drugs, and she's in the house, and just not good stuff is going on. She goes in her pocket. Guess what was in her pocket? Nobody even said a word to her. She's got it. Getting ready to get drugs. Hi. She starts reading the card in the middle of the house, waiting for her drug deal, or drugs. And all of a sudden, she gets an outer body experience. And she sees herself. And as she's reading the cards, a bunch of evil spirits, black spirits, started leaving her body. <laughs> While she's trying to get drugs, she reads the card and she's getting delivered of demons. <laughs> and she gets free. She says the prayer on the card, never touch drugs again. She served God for what, like 20, 30 years? She served God after that for 30 years. Give Jesus the biggest shout of praise. Man! Simply by doing this, hey, when you got some time, can you read this for me? It'll change your life, man. And just give it out. Open your mouth. Because evangelize, you got to talk to people. How many got something? You guys got something? I love it.